for Woodwork in Wisdom. So that commits to tools. We're busy again, so we're back in the tool room. Now, we've already done some videos on different sharpening methods. We're continuing those at the moment. So we've already looked at the water stone, diamond stone, oil stones, okay? I'm just going to grab that out a second. Just to recap on these two, something going to be a bit informative on where we're heading. So these are made out of natural materials, stone, resin bonded. So we've got aluminum oxide, silicon carbide are the raw materials in those. So they're bonded together. They make up your stones for your water stones. If you haven't seen those videos, they're online there somewhere. You can go back and have a look. Our diamond stones, going to put that, going to put them out of the way. So we're going to change a little bit. This is something that is relatively new. Why do I say relatively new? Last 15, 20 years maximum. When I went to college, this would have been a real no-no. Something as a sharp cutting tool and a brazier of paper never came together. And I mean, if you sanded the piece of wood, you'd never go back over it with a cutting tool. So you sand the wood and you hand plane it? No. That was almost a criminal offence. So we're actually going to sharpen with a brazier paper. This has a terminology of scary sharpening. That's doing what I just said we can't do. Bring the two together. Wow. So why would we want to do this? Um, I will say, I'm one of those that kind of go, I love you using my water stones. Gives me a sharp edge, it's quick, pretty accurate, easy to do. I've been able to play around with this and it's kind of interesting. There's things that this is possibly better at doing. So you can get better results quicker. So let's have a look at what we've got. First thing we're going to start with, what can we sharpen on? A brazier paper. That's a whole term of different things though. Ideally, cloth back to braise if it's better. So those of you who've been watching Colwyn's wood turning demos, we use this RB406 cloth back to braise it. Stronger. It's designed actually for the metal industry, so really good. This is made, and guess what this is? This is aluminium oxide. That's the same as we just said about our water stains, those sort of things. So same sort of material. Resin bonded onto a cloth backing. Right, cloth back, I prefer. You'll see why as we go through. So we've got different grades. As we've done with Colwyn's video, we've said about the P number. So this is 600, 240, different grades, okay? So it is six, your two, okay? Let's just have a quick look. Now also on the bench here, I'm gonna go up to here. Ben's got that camera shot overhead, which is great for us. So we've got different types of basic now, wet dry, silicon carbide, garnet paper. Again, different grades. I'm not a fan of using paperback to brazier for this, and you'll see why we go for the demo. Okay, so we're going to lose those. Paperback again. We've stuck some of this down. This is 60 grit. Okay, um, we found this over in the wood turning room. I haven't got a lot of paperback to brazier for about, so we'll have a look at this. Okay, we've used some of this, stuck it down. Ooh, two to go. Now we do this stuff. So Ben's got this camera overhead, fantastic. Right, this is a, an abrasive film that we sell. This was something I think found by accident a few years back. We asked for a self disease of abrasive, what was available. And this is what we were sent as a sample. From then on, it's come in, it's like, oh, wow. So what is this? So we said self disease we've got a peel off backing. You can see how that changes, that's great. This is the abrasive, a blue color. This is aluminum oxide again. Particle size, P25, we haven't got all of it there, so this is two and a half thousand grit. There's an 800, a 1200, okay, and then we've got the two and a half thousand. So the higher the number, the finer the grade, okay? So a bit like our water stones, we had 8,000, 1200, 6,000. A bit like this, the higher the number we go, the finer the grade it is, the better the finish. That's relevant to throwing as well, okay? So two and a half thousand grits, the finest on those three blue papers. These aren't paper, these are plastic. Um, lasts a long time, very hard wearing, quite interesting. Weird thing with this, you can't tear it. It doesn't rip, okay? So in reality, it's very tough, so we'll take what we're going to use it for. The last thing I've got on here, we've got a couple, one we've already stuck down. So we've got a 
diamond plate. This is one of the ones we do on our brand. So 1,000 grit. We've got the number in the middle. If you want, Ben, let's just go to four for a second. Okay. Put them on here. You've got your 1,000 grit nicely in the middle. You can see your clusters of your diamonds, the layout. Whoops. Move that back. Let's just grab my pencil. So you've got the cluster and the structure. All the little slots, the straight lines, are actually relief lines for access to get rid of the waste material. Flush it out so you can use water or oil as a lubricant. But that really helps. So this pattern formation laid down to try and keep it clean. Okay. Again, self is easy. So these have a backing. We can peel it off. Okay. The other one we've got, then just go back over. Thanks. Okay. This is a Shakurin plate. This is stuck down onto an aluminium backing. The aluminium being dead flat. That's going to lead to something we're going to look at in a minute. So this with bonded and stuck on. Okay. We used this on one of the previous videos. So it's kind of there. Now, do you think we've already looked at diamond stones? I'm not going to use that today because that's actually a diamond stone, okay? As much as it's a stick-down plate, but you could use the stick-down plate on where we're heading in a second, okay? Which will become a bit more apparent. So let's lose that one. Okay, a couple of things just to grab. First thing, you need something to sharpen off, okay? So while well, we've got a picture in the front there, I guess there are two options, really. That we've got we have a glass plate okay that will work now first of all it needs to be pretty chunky 12 mil glass is recommended you want something that's not going to flex you've got your thickness here okay gives you an idea it's quite a thick material you want it to stay dead flat not flex or move okay i much prefer a granite block all right machine flip a bit more thickness That'll become relevant in the sharpening session as well. That gives me a bit more clearance around it. It doesn't move, it's stable. If you kick it, you know it's there. All right. I don't know about dropping off the bench, but less likely to drop off the bench, maybe than a bit of glass. So I tend to prefer working on the granite. Okay. On glass plate, we've already done a little bit of work. So we have set this up. So we've stuck the paper down. All right. We've set the cloth back to braise it on here. It isn't self adhesive, so we used a spray adhesive. We've also put some of that 60 grit down. We bonded it down. If I flip this over, you'll probably see the glue. You can see the patchiness. So we used a spray mount glue on those. You can't use double sided tape, that'll create a lip, an edge. It'll raise it up each time you hit it. So, therefore, spray mount glue is the only way to go if you want to use normal paper. Stick down stuff makes life a little bit easier. So, we're going to work with the glass one just for a second. Most people, if you look at what they do, scary sharpening, they are doing their cutting edge. One of the things I wanted to play around with this, could we actually use this to create our primary bevel, 25 degrees, clear that back. So actually using this as your bench grinder and another commodity called manual labor, elbow grease, okay? So you want something to sharpen. Um, I'm a bit like quite a few, a lot of you at home. I do a little bit of home DIY. So I have good chisels, I have bad chisels. Um, that's not a bad way of phrasing it, it's just the fact that certain things seem to get abused. Um, you know, when you slip and you drop it on the floor, or you hit the plaster, or there's a nail embedded in the door you haven't seen when you're cutting the new hinge recess, all those little things. I love the fact the three guys in here is kind of looking at me a bit paranoid and worried, okay? Yeah, I have those problems, okay? Now, to give you that scenario, you drop it on the floor, we've got Tormek dressing stone. All right, it's not really the thing to do, so don't go doing this with your chisels, but this is gonna actually really take that cutting edge off. We've probably got a little bit of a bear on the back now. I can feel that. Probably hear it, okay. We've now got curled, we've got a bit of chip in the edge, probably damaged it a little bit. I don't know if it will show up too much over here. We're gonna go to number four for Ben a minute, okay. Oh, look, yeah, nice. Okay, you can see the chippiness down near the front. We want to get rid of that. Now, what we're going to do, in reality with this demo, some of you go, yeah, it's a bit over the top for me. I'm only a carpenter, I only want to get my tools sharp. You're going a bit too far, too sharp for me. Is there too sharp? Why do we want to sharpen stuff? It's safer, easier to use, less effort. 
Next thing I want to try and get over for you is if you can make it repeatable, and we've said this in every single video, it's quicker and easier to sharpen. Now, when I went to college, we learned to freehand sharpen. Now, first of all, what we're going to do now, impossible. Good luck. I cannot see you managing to push this up and down on a piece of rough abrasive paper. And these are quite coarse, 60 and 150 grit. Too coarse for that. You're going to drag about. It won't give you the accuracy. So therefore, want to make sure we can make it repeatable. So we're going to go with a honing guide. So let's just bring in a couple of bits. We're going to assemble this probably on the glass, I think, there. So we've got the three components. Now, we're doing a chisel. So this is the Veritas honing guide. It has a chisel head. It has a roller, a setup jig. Just going to bring this in. We're going to use that in a second. That's the hand plane head in reality, something wider. Let's phrase it that way. So we're going to take that back out of the way. Our roller I'm going to pick up. I'm going to undo this brass screw. Now, this I said is the roller. I use this in the most basic form. There is a cam set roller I don't use at the moment. I prefer to keep it at 12 o'clock and set the tool up for what I want. Nice big wide roller. Lots of stability when we put it down. Okay. I'm going to put the chisel head on. A little screw with the washer. I'm going to put the two together. Okay. Hopefully you can see all that. Turn it sideways so you can see what's going on. Okay. On here, this bolt, right hand, move that in and out. Okay. If I lay it down, you can see those jaws in here, in the pencil up, into there. They close and they open. Okay. This will grip our chisel. Now, next thing I'm going to do, yellow dot on here. There's two settings. Okay. Nice and clear on the camera, I hope there. I can undo here, we can go to the green setting, we can slide it forward, go to the yellow. Lock it back on the yellow, I wanna work on there. On the bar we have here, this has standard angles, come up through, now let's just help you on there. Then just pop to number four a minute. Hopefully you can see on there, look at that, beautiful. All right, standard angles, back bevels, high angles. Even some of that goes over my head. Okay, and I've got a bit of a background in this, so some of you are going to go, what's all that? My relationship with this, yellow line, standard angle, so much easier, okay? On the side of the tool, leave yourself where you are, Ben. We have, I can keep myself over, don't know if we're going to see it, so easy here. On this bar, along the front, there, okay? Just see the corner of it, right over here, there is a little dovetail, okay? So then we go back up to the overhead, number three. Okay, this slides on. Right, we've said about this in the past, onto there. So it slides on and off, I can move it about, I can slide on, but it will only come on and off from the side. We're done there. On that yellow line that we looked at, there were numbers, 25, 30, that three. I wanted 25 for this, primary bevel, grinding angle. So I've set it for 25, lock it in. Take our chisel, back into here. Just gonna finger tighten up those two little jaws. So now everything is gripped, either side of the chisel, fixed it in place, clamped. Just gonna slide over our side stop. So there, bring it up, lock off, take that off. Okay, so what's this done? This has become our lamp stop. Make it accurate, repeatable. So 25, we want to use this as a grinding tool instead of using a bench grinder. Some of you might not have that sort of aspect or a Tormek or motorized machine, if you like. Which grade? Let's go with a 60 for a minute. Onto there, very coarse. So, I'm down. I think you hear the sound from there, working back and forwards. Now we colored in with the marker pen. We're looking at what we have, where we're trying to get rid of that material, okay? So we've still got a little bit of pen on the front. We want to get that all the way down through. We've got to get rid of those ships. Done. And again. A little bit of pressure. We can work this. The abrasive is obviously working. Now, other weird thing with this. Starts to get hot. And I will say the finer the grade abrasive, the warmer it'll get quicker, okay? So with this case of checking what's happening, 
and let it cool down a little bit and get my fingertips back in. So hell to hold, one of the other weird questions we get with people when we do the shows, my thumb's going underneath. So there is a little bar platform on here. The roller, right in underneath. I can sit my thumbs in, fingertips over the top, keep my pressure. Nice and equal. You've got to do this both hands. You can't watch telly when you do this. So up and down, go along, get your pressure nicely. Now I'm deliberately trying to work on one area that I've raised it for a minute. Getting hot again. Checking what's happening. Okay. Use a bit more of it. Now that big wide roller adds to the stability. Very warm again. So I've just got to just going to have another look now. Again, headline really helps. See what's going on. So just remark it. We can give you a quick idea on number four, just to see what's happening over there. Okay. Not too bad. So back into here. Be easy to see. Now, okay. We've worked, Ben, if you just go number three for me. You can see where I've worked on the abrasor. And this is one of my dislikes for scary sharp, and you've got to start to realize as we go on, okay? But I've highlighted that, that little bit. That's where we've worked. Now, if I keep quiet, got your sound on there, come over to here. Should sound different. This is new. This has already started to lose that edge. So therefore, it's going quite blunt. Going to move over a little bit, get the hard work done. So we've started quite coarse. Okay, nearly there. Getting hot again, okay. You wouldn't think you can burn your fingers that quick. Now, it'll be interesting when we do the bench grinder video um, how less or least amount of time you need before this gets too hot to hold. Now, the guys are sat here kind of smiling at me because I'm having to lick my fingertips, all right, just to calm things down, okay? So, hopefully, they get there. Okay, so I'm just going to flip this round. Why do I want to flip it round? I want to get to that right if we haven't used down in this corner. To have a quick look, feel what's going on, nearly up to the front. You wouldn't think things could get that warm. Okay. Just feeling what's happening. It'd be lovely to get one of you guys to come and touch this and kind of go, ooh, that's getting a bit. Okay. Just keep my fingers on there now. So it gives you an idea how warm that can get. Now, if you were using a bench grinder, you don't want to blue the tool steel. We don't want to burn it. Okay. Nearly up to that stage of right up the front. You want to get all the way up the bevel? Okay, let's just um, turn the fingers off. Craig's got a question here, which is great. Hi, Jason. Uh, so a message from Kevin. Um, I've heard that it doesn't matter if the steel gets hot, providing you're using HSS tools. Is that correct? In what way? To cool them down? So if you're trying to... Right? Maybe, maybe the, the getting hot doesn't affect yep. high-speed steel as much yep. as regular. Um, any metal will get hot anyway. Obviously, if you're talking high-speed steel, more likely to be planar, uh, to be planar blades or possibly you were turning tools. 
you ideally don't want to blue the edge. There's some guys that say if you blue high speed steel, it's not as bad. Carbon steel, hand plans, chisels, definite no no, you draw the temper out. When we start looking at the video for the bench grind, it's something really to cover with that because you blew it, you soften it or harden it. Okay, so if you're on a bench grinder and you blew it, you'd likely to harden it, you make it more brittle or too soft. So when you start cutting, the edge will chip out or it'll curl over. On your turning tools, not as bad, but ideally don't try and blow it so it's lighter pressure. Take your hands off, give it time to cool down. Some guys will say, dip it in water. That can cause fractures in the steel, cooling it too quickly. So you need to ideally let it cool down. All right, so hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea there, okay? All right, Craig, another question. Yeah, um, Ollie Woolley has suggested, uh, can you not wear gloves, help with the heat? Can't feel. That makes sense. I want to feel what's going on. Feel how it works on the abrasive, whatever else. But ideally, also, this is letting it cool down. So, gloves on there. I want to be able to keep my pressure on nice and tight. Right? You could wear a thin pair of leather gloves if you like. I love to feel, okay? So, we're just about up to hopefully where we want to be. If we look at our sheet there, Ben, you probably want to go back up to three. Now, I kept this little brush. Okay, hopefully you can see what's going on now. We're brushing things about, okay. Wow, okay. Can you see my pile of wood or metal fibers now, okay? That's our burnt out chisel, if you like. That's what we've just removed. It's probably a mixture of the abrasive paper though as well. Be interesting if you've got a magnet, you pick it up. A little bit more just to go. Now I'm working across this, trying to, all right, all right. So let's just have a quick look. Just want to bring us out to here, okay? Now, I'm just going to drop it there. I need to do something as well. I'm just going to put my glasses on, okay? I just want to have a look at where we are. Now, room number four is our camera, which is close up. I need to just check our position, okay? On there, that looks better for you. Now, hopefully, you're seeing we've got nice, clean down through. Okay, all right, that looks good. Just going to feel my fingertip. We're producing our burr on the back, which is what we want. We want to get all the way up to that front edge. Okay, so just going to do a little bit more on here. So we're back on there. Okay, again, keeping our pressure as we've gone on the bevel, primary bevel, 25 degrees. It's got longer, takes more effort. Also, the abrasive paper is now losing its edge, okay? It's not as sharp. Just check we're tight on there, nothing's moving. Find a little bit to get out. Okay, hot. All right, so gives you an idea of heat-wise how quickly you can heat something up. Now, we've used that bit of abrasive. There's a little bit back in this corner. That's sharp. The rest of this, it's lost that edge. Not going to be very effective to do another blade, chisel, hand plane on there now. Taking that edge quite away off there. We could do a similar thing with the 150 grit. I might do a hand plane a bit later. We'll see how we get on for time. Um, the reason I stuck these down before we started, give us time to bond them. So you'd use a spray mount glue, stick it down. Going to show you when we get to the end of the demo. Be nice to, and you've got to remind me one of you that we've got to take this off. Want to show you why I have a dislike for paper for this. So, for a minute, going to put this out of the way. All right. Going to bring in the other block. Okay. You could have this all set up on one block. Granite block. Okay. Check my position. All right. A bit over. Get you a bit square so you can see what's going on. Okay. Good. Now we're going to use some of this Hermi blue stick down abrasive. Going to have two grades. We want to finish our chisel off. I could have done what we've just done there, that primary grind, middle one. 240 get diamond plate will last longer than the abrasive paper we've done. Okay, so we peel that off. Just want a bit of blue barrel roll. Paper. I'd clean these before we started. So if I peeled anything off, you need to clean this. So clean the surface, uh, spirit solvent, cellulose, white spirit, get rid of everything, no glue left from before. 
have had scenes or we've had comments. Or I've talked to people at shows about the film back. When I peel it off, it's hard to get off. Yeah, it sticks and it does stick well. Can leave a sticky residue. So you will need to get rid of that before you stick anything else down or you're going to get an uneven surface. So I peeled it off, coming right over to the edge. Just going to pull my glasses down so I can see what I'm doing. I want to get it pretty straight, okay? Holding the back edge, I don't want any air, okay? So, a little scraper, pull that down. Whilst I still remember, I've got a pen line, okay? So we've got two and a half. Uh, let's go, I think 1200 over here, okay? Now we said you can't go tearing this stuff. All right, you've got to cut it. It's too tight. I put a pen line on here, so I've got a measurement just as a guide. A pair of scissors. Okay, so cut across there. Cut it off. Peel off the backing. Hook it up. Checking where we are now. I want to get again quite out close out to the side edge of the stone. This side, where I am. Oh. Okay, so we bond that down. Again, using that squiddy, don't want any air in underneath there. Don't want any lumps. So, 1,200. Okay. So you could, as we said, stick it down on glass. I do know guys that have even tried to stick it down on things like melamine board, but you need something dead flat. It's not going to distort or move. Okay. Get rid of those. Our chisel, we're going to move. At the moment, we're 25 degree primary bevel. So I'm just going to slacken it off, move it back. On here, going to adjust. We want 30 degree as a cutting edge. Okay. Now, at the moment, we're concentrating more, if you like, on what we're sharpening on, the medium to use to sharpen with. Future videos, I want to look at different angles with you and different chisels, how that will affect what you get. Okay. So just going to pin up the vice jaws again, side stop to bring up the plate, slide it forward our length stop, okay? So those vice jaws again, grip down, holding it in place, got our chisel, okay? Pen mark again. We only now want to cut across the front, okay? Very small bit. Now we're going to look at the sharpening aspect. We've just done the bench grind a bit. Gives you an idea how much work your bench grinder does or your sharpening system. When we need it, we want something that's going to work. Now on here we can use a number of things. We could use, let's have a look, where's bang? Can we go to two, please, bang? Okay. Got a couple of things up on here. All right, we've got camellia oil. You could use that as a lubricant. I've got some home right, which is a water additive to stop things going rusty. You could go with a honing oil. So what I'm getting at, I can use a number of things, even though it's plastic backed, just as a lubricant. Go and water for this, just, just a little bit messy, okay? So, fingers and thumb again, get things in there, pressure, up and down. Okay? Now, then if we go to number four, Hoping you can see where we've lost the pen line on the front already. Look at that. Nice band. That's quite a rapid removal of that little area. Okay. We can go two and a half. Okay. Now, the higher the number we go, the more we're going to polish. Okay. So, just break back into there. Got something a bit shiny. I've got a few more things to do to this. Okay. So we didn't need a lot of work. The hard work was done that first grade. Okay, just going to slide this forward. Got something in here which we've used before and help you understand. So then we're going to be overhead camera to number three. Oh, bits of paper. At the moment, when we sharpened our chisel initially, we will have put lots of lines down through the edge from the abrasive paper. If you magnified the front of the chisel edge, have this serration. 
lots of lines coming through. So if we try using that to cut with as much as it will feel sharp, the aspect that you're up to an edge, they're pretty weak pieces because each of these is like a toe blown chip. They break off. So gets blunt. Snaps away, okay? That little point because you've got the grooves off the abrasion. 1200 grit. Starts to remove them, bring them down, makes them smaller, okay? So longer sections, adds a bit more strength. The finer we go, you'll get to something as a bar. Less grooves, more strength. Less likely to snap away, stay sharp longer, okay? So that simple little thing of how that's done could be really important. Now, when we started this series of looking at different videos and sharpening stuff, we set about describe the word sharpness. The actual coming together are two ground points. So our chisel, we've got the metal bar, all right? Well, around there. All right, Ben, can you go to two? Nice. Don't touch it. You get your chisel here, all right? Your section. You have your angle, all right? Let's see if I can bring me down a bit, okay? Gets you there. We have the back, the bevel. Those two points coming together create your sharp edge. Now at the moment, everything we've done with this chisel that we've got in our holding guide, we have done on the bevel. The sharp edge that most people would, oh yeah, okay. Now we're also then going to look at the back edge. We haven't touched that yet. But at the moment, I have a lovely big bear on the back here. Okay? Haven't touched that at all. Just going to slide our block back in. Um, now it's quite an important part. Get lots of people look up and say, got to flatten the back of a chisel. First of all, yes, it needs to be flat, okay? So length-wise, ideally the flatter the better down through the length, definitely across the front to where the cutting edge is. Now, Ben, if you just go to number four, I'm just going to put the chisel guard back on here, okay? This is... Um, a badly made chisel or cheaper quality however you want to phrase it all these grinding lines have been left from the machining surface if those grinding lines continue all the way to the front which they did if you think about the little v bits we showed you on the bit of paper they're coming out for the cutting edge they're affecting how it's going to cut in other words you'll get little grooves on the back of your chisel okay coming out the front edge we should get the circular come round, okay? So therefore, we need to get rid of those. So at the moment, with our chisel, we're up to the top edge, two and a half, we've done that. We're gonna work on the back. A Little bit of water on both of those. I'm gonna start with the 1200. I can turn my block round, check where you are, put it down flat, okay? We could even come off the corner if you're worried about that big bear. And what we didn't do was use the abrasive plate. So the abrasive that we used as a grinder, if you use that to do this, you're going to put lots of deep scratches in. If you've got to do that initially when you buy a new chisel, fine. You go something coarser to flatten it back. Then from then on, I can stick with my 1200 grip and work out through. So this will produce some small scratch line, but it'll get rid of that bear. Okay? Small bit. Swing it round, two and a half thousand. A lot finer to get through. Work along. So the idea of this really is the fact to help flatten the back of the chisel, get that angle nice and flat. Now the back of the chisel needs to be dead flat. You can't have a secondary bevel coming up to the front or it's not going to cut nicely. It will actually pull into the workpiece. So all the way along. Now, this should start to actually give us a bit more of a shine on here. All right, so Ben, I expect we go to full. Let's have a look where we are. You can see we're starting to get something more of a polish, okay? A bit more reflective. Want to get that all the way up to the front. So, back over again. We can use a mixture of round and round, back and forwards. Back and forwards probably easier to control. You're less likely to rock the chisel so you don't add a curve. Okay, now, 
just to give you an idea on this bit, quite important this. And one of the reasons I like this, and that, that's a strong statement for me because normally, I'd, if you ask me what to shirt on, I'd tell you a water stand. Okay? So I like this. So a water stand. Problem with this, it's semi frayable It wears away. It's soft, which actually means when we look at it in a few weeks' time, this is hollow. <laughs> can be hollow in both directions. So we get hollow down the limb, hollow across. So if you try and flatten the back of the chisel on something that is not flat, you'll make the chisel curve. That's gonna affect what's gonna happen. And then you sort of, it's not flat. I spent hours trying to flatten it. If you start with something, as a granite block that's flat, and something that's on it that's flat, so the paper, you should get a flatter edge a lot quicker. And this is a learning curve for me when I played with this this week, just the fact of, yeah, that's interesting. Find it easier to maintain and keep a flat edge. So that paper back to brazier, not soaking that moisture up, that's good, helps lubricate it washing out. All the way up through. We've already done the top edge. Okay. Now this is the sort of thing you might want to do when you get a new chisel. First thing I'd almost do if I bought myself a new chisel, go to this. I mean, again, we go over number four, you probably see we're starting to get more of a reflection. Okay, can't quite see the guys over there, nearly. Okay, so we'd work, keep going, okay? Other chisel we've got on the bench, similar thing, we've already got quite a good shine, you can do the back. Got to keep it dead flat. So as I present it, the handle's doing a little bit of work, pushing it, okay? Now angle-wise on here, something that I was thinking about the other day with a few of the guys when we did something with Carl Wynn's video, I was that. Angles, now I've said 25 degrees. Now what I'm doing is really easy in reality to measure. So we have a protractor. We could set 25 on here if you're unsure. Okay, onto there. We'd set our angle, okay? So we go down it. Give us 25. If you're doing something as a gouge, so for the guys that are watching the wood turning videos and wanting to know where you set your angle, you come from the flute underneath. So you get a 40 degree bevel or whatever, okay? So you can actually slide your protractor down through, set up. That's where we're measuring that bevel angle. So our 25 we've got there, and then we've done a 30 just on the front. So my dirty chisel, let's have a look. It's getting there. Now I've got a little bit of work. I go over to camera four on the bench over in the corner. I'm starting to get that reflection building up nicely. A little bit to get on the front. So it looks like this chisel drops down a little bit. Front edge drops away. So I could go back to the 800 or the 1200 and dress it back flatten it off, work out through. Don't go lifting the handle. All right, so Ben, can we go to two just a second? Temptation with this is to try and cheat and get up to that grade, bring this up a bit. That's not gonna help you at all with how your chisel functions. It needs to be flat to do your pairing cuts. So quite important that you keep it nice and flat and work up through there. Okay, so we've got our chisel, we've got our paper. As we said, with this being cloth backed or paper backed with that plastic, incredibly strong. Haven't really worn anything away on here yet. We can rewash it, okay? So we could spray it over again. Now, we said about hand plane. Let's change then. Can get our plane down. Turn that out, okay? We want and do our blade. So, bring our block back over. Now, in here, we've already got primary bevel. Up for uh, just going to colour in the tip. Okay. We're going to change oh, the head. On the honing guide, want something a bit wider to grip this. So bolt back in. Yellow dot again, central. 
set up bar going to slide on. I have a measurement scale on the bar, two inches. I know this playing blade is two inch wide, so I lock onto there, back throw. Lock them off. Both sides, so I tighten both up, check they're equal. Over tighten that side, bring it back. A little bit of water on the way, Craig, all right? Okay. Right. Um, would you recommend using a leather strop or go straight off the 2500? No, okay, so next stage we're going to do, once we've done this plane and the chisel, we'll get the leather strop in. It's already up on here somewhere amongst. We've got the blue. All right, the leather strop is here and definitely go to a leather strop. Okay, going to do a couple of things with that in a second. So, yes, we will be going to a leather strop. Again, one of those things that I never used to do. But we'll explain it when we're going, okay, and we are going to do it. Um, I love the leather strop. Okay, so we're going to do the plane, and then we'll go back to the chisels as well and do all of it together. Okay, plane blade, we've already got, you can see, probably you can see the light reflecting off there, so we've already done the back of this. Fingers and thumb again, up to there. Now, to give you an idea of how quick we can work, We've lost our pen up through, back over to four. I think Ben can see, you can see the pen there. Look, you can see the nice shiny line in front of it, fantastic. So where the pen is missing, we've removed that material. We don't need to remove lots. It's about bare minimal. So the beauty of using something like a honing guy with this, it's quick and repeatable. We can do the back. Just that finer grade, okay? So two and a half. Keeping things nice and flat again, pushing down. Some guys do a thing called the ruler trick, which you put a six inch ruler about two inches across. You can do a secondary bevel. I prefer just to keep it flat for now. Less confusing for most of you. Okay, we should polish that up. Okay, so let's move our block out of the way a bit. Let's go to that question then. So, lever strop. Okay, bring it in. Don't want that one there. Okay. Now, blue pair we said we put on the edge, so we've got access to get in here. Okay. Well, right, bad. All right. So we can get in the side. That gave me more access than having it in the middle. I can work down it, come across the corner. That's quite important. Lever strop, I can put on top of the here if we want. Don't need to so much, but it's easier for you to see. So up on the honing paste, a little bit. So the guys that watched Ben yesterday, what about the carving tools and some of the pyrography stuff you use the honing strop exactly the same way now thing with this on gently raise my hand okay so bang go to camera two as well just a sec I'm just going to bring me around there so we go on dead flat at the moment i lift the back of the blade and i feel for when we line up with the bevel because what we don't want to be doing is dragging too much so this bit bit freehand we don't want to roll it. Nice and gently, pulling towards you, so don't cut the lever. Three or four strokes. Turn it over, the back needs to be kept dead flat. From there, pull it back. Okay, don't go lifting it. If you lift it, you round the edge. Now, in other words, coming up towards the front. Plain blade wouldn't be that severe. You would chisel, yet it will damage it. It will round the corner off, back over, okay? So the leather strut, what's that actually doing? That's gonna give you more of a polish. So I expect if we go back over to four, I'll get my glasses so I can see where we are, okay? Hoping you can see that mirror line on there. It looks like, oh, that looks good, okay? That shine. So quite quick and easy to get up to a polished area. Now, if you think about, we said about the sharpening bit, the little Vs, that's got rid of all those little V cuts, okay? So then we'll go back over to there, all right, good. Our chisel, the one we just sharpened, where's my manky handle? That one there, okay? So at the moment we've done the two and a half thousand, we can do the back, all right? Exactly the same. And this is why I kind of was waiting to get to this bit because I can do it one stage instead of moving things about, turn it over, gently bring it up, draw it along. 
Okay? Not rounding it, keep it nice and flat. The honing compound is a soap, it's mildly abrasive and will polish. Other things that I use, fine polishing paste, okay? So this can be put on the leather strop, that will take it a little bit finer again. So that will polish metal, I've even used that for things like brass hinges. Okay, so, and there, back over. That gives us something again, we're pretty sharp. I expect this then goes back over to four. We're getting our shiny edge, okay. Nice shine there, that's good. Got a little bit, as we said, I want to do on the back a bit more. You can see how the color changes down through here. Get a darker line there. This is more shiny, okay. The other chisel is nice and good for that. It hopefully give you more of a guide. You can get something that actually, if I can get myself in the right position, reflective. Okay. So that gives you an idea of what we can achieve. Just do a little bit of polishing. Now the main thing with that, so bend back to front one, I think. Number one. Main thing with that, don't go doing any heavy work on this once you've got it to that shine. So in other words, there's no point in going back to a really coarse abrasive paper that'll scratch it. Then you've got to build that all back up again. So take off the bare minimal on that side, two and a half, 1200 grit, that's it, okay? Now other weird and wonderful things we have to sharpen, when we do the chair course, we do our seats. Oh. Make some room, okay? We use things like inch shapes, okay? Bent drawer knife. We use it for the chair seats, we shape them. I have to keep them sharp. How? I remember when I first got these, what are we going to do to sharpen these? Now we've got the egg cook coming together of two ground points. You've got to do both. So started to work out that I can get something like two inch waste pipe, stick the abrasive down to this. So with being self as easy, if I'll stick on the pipe nicely. I can hold that. I can come into here. So what I'm getting at, if you've got something as a shape, or a component that you want to work on, you want to take off a small amount of material, you haven't chipped the edge or damaged it, this is just about resharpening it. Again, I could use some water as a lubricant, just work along that edge, okay? Now I'm resting totally across the back, almost nice and straight, I can bring it up, so I raise the handle tiny bit, up round to the front. Front edge. We could go with diamond file, but again, same stuff, something as a backing board, a bit of MDF, allows me just to work along, come round, sharpen that chip up, work across it. So your scary sharpening got quite a place to do certain things. Okay, smaller one. Now I had to put the zip ties on this because the plastic, when I left this for a couple of days, I'm wrapped. Okay, so the zip ties, just really to make sure it stayed there for this afternoon. So, got our inshape. Some of you might have things like in canal gouges. Then number four, please. Okay, so we have our gouge. We've got the sharpened edge on the inside. Quite a specialized tool. Something I can remember guys from when we were down the shop kind of come in going, how do I sharpen that? Again, back over, all right. We've got the scope that we can use something round pipe and it matches the diameter of what we want quite nicely. Hopefully you can see there, okay. Stick down, put the chisel on, I can draw it down through. So you can do shape components to get to where you want, okay. I can move it around, okay. Which one we are, that's there. Right, two and a half, let's go the finer. Okay, so this will actually give me a way of sharpening that inside face. Get it up. So again, we can do our sharpened edge, get a shine. Back edge on there, we could use pretty much anything, but again, we've got that little bit of MDF stuck down, that boil. We can use that as a small home, something that's portable. So again, we've got Ben's demo yesterday. Had a question of how do you sharpen that little carving gouge? Same sort of thing, you can actually make up something to do those specific shapes or contours, get over those issues, okay? So your scary sharpening has 
quite a place. It was something when I first started thinking about what can we use to sharpen with? Scary sharpening? Ooh, I don't know. Surprise your paper, don't know, don't like it. Actually, having played with certain things, blue paper is fantastic. As long as you stick it down something flat, got to clean off the residue, get rid of that gunk. So that could be important. So thinners and meth, something as a solvent. Now, okay, we said about the glass plate. We did that red paper. We used it pretty hard. Ben, I think we can probably go, okay, let me move. Oh, that to there. From the paper back to brazier. Right. Oh, becomes hard work, okay? So, paper back to brazier from there becomes hard work to do that task. It sticks down nicely, doesn't remove nicely. So, Ben, just go to number two a minute. All right. So, hopefully, if I come down, you can see it on there, okay? Sticks on there quite hard. Get all that residue. Cloth backed. Bit easier, isn't it? Clean up. So, one of the comments I have had from people on this is how do you clean that up? Um, Cohen, can you go get one of your Cohen Way skew chisels out the wood turning room? We just, no. But now I shut up my chisel. I don't really want, okay. Um, so you need something coarse to, uh, it's a pain, all right? So paper back to brazier does have that issue that if you stick it down, it's a problematic to get it back off the plate, be it the glass, the granite, the board, okay? Cloth backed, so much easier. I mean, this will even really stick because of contact type of easier, okay? The blue stuff that we use, the plastic backed, no issue peeling that one off, apart from it leaves a bit of sticky residue. It's gone hard, and I will tell you, this stuff lasts. It doesn't, doesn't seem to lose its edge very quickly. So therefore, if you're gonna clean up, a bit of maths or whatever, first job with this, I'd have to get something as a, an old chisel and so right, clean it up. So then we've got to sharpen another one. Right then guys, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Then you can go back up, all right? So hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into scary sharpening, okay? Not the most interesting subject, but it bounces different ideas off you, okay? Different ways of sharpening. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. So more from Woodworking Wisdom to come. Next week, Tuesday, three o'clock, we're turning demo. We look forward to seeing you. Thanks very much. Bye then.